top administration officials. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Chair, recognize Mr. Goldman from New York. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd love to get the extra minute that Mr. Fallon got as well. Um, thank you guys for being here today. Uh, we don't have a lot of time here. I have a lot of questions. If I cut you off, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to get through them. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the actual the evidence you did have. Um, Mr. Ziegel, you were the case agent. So how many documents uh, did, did you say, would you say you gathered during the five-year investigation? So, however, I do believe I may have documents. I am um, limited by the statute, but I b would be more than welcome to turn those documents over No, no, I don't need them. The how many? Just the number. It was a significant amount of documents. I apologize. Hundreds of thousands? Millions? I don't, I don't want to put a number to it, but there was a lot. Right. Uh, bank records, right? You had a lot of bank records? Yes. Both domestic and foreign? That is correct. And you conducted search warrants? Uh, yes, th th there was reference in our transcripts to conducting electronic search warrants. And did you do other search warrants as well? When you say other search warrants, what do you mean? Any other search warrants, electric, otherwise, physical? Uh, so I'm going to stick to what I stated in my transcript. There were multiple electronic search warrants. And you said that executed. you conducted more than 60 interviews as part of this investigation, is that right? In your that is correct. That's a lot for any investigation, right? Uh, for a tax I investigation? I wouldn't say that. Yeah. I would say that All right, in my 10 years, I don't know how many uh, investigations I did with 60 interviews. Um, so I want to focus, though, for a second on the, the WhatsApp that we went through. Um, and uh, Mr. Shapley, in your testimony, you, uh, your opening statement, you said that the text message, the WhatsApp message that we've been talking about, shows Hunter Biden discussing business with his father. Could you show me where in the text message it, it uh, says anything about discussing business with Joe Biden? So if you'd like me to go through it, I mean, I can take time to review it if you'd like me to. Well, I don't have the time, unfortunately, as you point out. I will tell you the only thing it says about it is that Hunter Biden was sitting with his father. It does not say anything about discussing any business. And Mr. Chapley, you also said in your testimony, um, and we've talked about this a bunch, that the agents were prohibited from pursuing leads related to uh, Joe Biden and, and the big guy, um, but the agents did that anyway, right? The, the age Interviewing Rob the Walker. agents interviewed Rob Walker. And they asked him about that, right? The word big guy. Right, they, they didn't use the word big guy, but they asked about it in reference to that, that text. And, um, do you recall that Rob Walker actually said in response to that that he was not aware that Joe Biden was ever a part of anything that he and Hunter were doing? That, that's what the uh, witness said, yes. Yes. And then you describe a lunch, what we t t uh, talked about earlier, where uh, Joe Biden came to say hello at the Four Seasons Hotel to a uh, lunch that he was having with CEFC executives, right? That's correct. But what you didn't talk about is uh, what Rob Walker said the origination of that lunch was. And you testified that he said to, to, that Hunter told his dad, according to Rob Walker, quote, I may be trying to start a company or try to do something with these guys. Now let me ask you something. That doesn't sound much like Joe Biden was involved in whatever Hunter Biden was doing with the CEFC if Hunter Biden is telling him that he's trying to do business with them, does it? No, but it does show that he said he told his father he was trying to do business, and he was okay. talking. Okay, well, to that his is true. Hunter Biden does try to do business. That's correct. Yes. So you don't not only have no direct evidence connecting Joe Biden to any of Hunter Biden's business deal, you actually had proof that he wasn't involved. That is the proof that you had. And in the end of the day, that this was a five-year criminal investigation with tens of thousands of documents, maybe hundreds of thousands, unusual warrants, aggressive techniques, you wrote a report recommending felony charges. It went to DOJ tax. They wrote a 99-page memo, a approval memo, right? And you, neither of you saw that, did you? That's correct. That is correct. And what was their, uh, what was their recommendation? So all I know Approval, is, discretion, or declination? So from, 
I have to stick to the confines. Okay, you of you testified that it was discretion, which means that it was to it wasn't an approval. It was to the discretion of the U.S. Attorney's Office, which had that DOJ tax memo, which had information from the defense lawyers that they spoke with, and they are the ones who have to prove this case in court. And I will tell you, as a federal prosecutor for 10 years, and I worked with many of your colleagues who do great work, and I'm sure you do great work as well, but I never met an agent who didn't want to charge every possible case. But what I notice in five hours of testimony today is that neither one of you has ever mentioned a, a portion of the case that may not be so strong, or may be suspect, or may have a defense. And that's because that's what the prosecutor has to think about before charging a case. And that is not what the special agent report does. So, Gentlemen's so time's expired. End, he went a minute over. Chair now recognizes Mr. Perry from Pennsylvania. I thank the